Hello and welcome to Network. My name is Spumele Lezonde with your technology and social media news. I hope Africa Day was great and that Africa Month is wrapping up really well for you. Now, if you want to be a part of this tech conversation, you can find us on SABC Network. That's on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. News Network at SABC.co.za on email. You can also use the hashtag SABC Network. Here's what's coming up in the program. Google has a funding for startups in Africa. They're giving this away through a competition they will be running in Kenya, Nigeria and South Africa. LG has also launched its G7 smartphone in South Africa. We have details about that. As kidnappers of a child in South Africa have asked for ransom in Bitcoin, we're asking if crime can be committed easier if cryptocurrencies are used. Adifu Mohabi from iAfrican is here for that one. Hello and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so Adifu, can money be hidden well if it's moved uh, through um, online platforms? It depends on your level of sophistication when it comes to cryptocurrencies, but we'll discuss that later. All right, yeah, we will discuss that later in the program. Here's your technology and social media news first. Now, the Google Impact Challenge wants to fund social entrepreneurs who are using tech in innovative ways. This money will be given out through a competition. They have $2 million US dollars for the South African leg of this competition. Many startup businesses struggle to get funding for the work they do. Google now says they will be injecting some cash through its local leg of the Google Impact Challenge. We're really going to be looking for um, great charity organizations, NGOs or social enter enterprise um, organizations that have the ability to make an impact through innovative tech. We see tech as a great enabler and we see tech as something that has a huge positive impact to society at large. And when we say tech, we mean from basic tech like usage of SMSing, MMSing, and organizations that just use MS, SMS, and organizations that use all the way advanced big data analytics to also help improve lives or use functional tech to improve lives. Startups say they're excited about this as they need the money, and they have plans on how it can be used. We've got a fantastic project in mind that will add value to schools the whole country and hopefully Africa at large because schools need to understand that they are that they've got the business side of the school the data that needs to be kept safe and the physical security side then there's the kids and of course how do we manage their safety online we working on the puku.coza web website which we've been doing for years but we felt we really need to upscale our digital platform really work on the social media side and actually upscale. We're interested in building a, a tech, um, puku, what we call Pukupedia, which is an online, online um, encyclopedia on African languages. Google has set aside two million US dollars for the South African leg of the competition. The money will be split over the different parts of the competition. Similar ones are taking place in Kenya and Nigeria. South Africa's top YouTubers say the struggle for them is monetizing from the platform. While there is money they make from video views, big brands still don't want to partner because they don't really understand these new methods of communication. We caught up with some of them. Growing up, I didn't see myself, you know, um, I didn't see many black girls and black girls with natural hair. So when I went natural, I started seeing that a bit more often, but I didn't see women with my coarse hair, what we call coarse hair. I don't call it coarse anymore. Essentially, the channel is like a beauty and lifestyle. I do makeup, we do travel, and essentially we started the channel because we felt like there was a lot of people who felt like they couldn't get access to proper makeup. So they felt like they always needed to pay and we tried to come up with a 
a different platform for you to be able to do makeup and know how to do it yourself for free. I felt that I needed to spread a positive message about South Africa online because six years ago, the only content you found about South Africa was crime footage or um, criminal activity or car crashes. And I felt that there was no one sharing a positive message or story about South Africa. So much more than just how many subscribers they want because sometimes we find that people love the content but they just don't want to click that subscribe button simply because they go oh why do I need to subscribe I can just come back and watch the content all the time but so we've seen growth and we've seen creators do really amazing things I would say it takes a lot of discipline and knowing the channel like the anal your analytics and knowing what works how does a youtuber make money so monetization there's many different ways but it's mainly comes down to working with brands and sponsorships now you have to align yourself with brands and see what the brand objective is and try and work with brands and marketers to believe in video marketing and digital marketing LG has launched the new G7 smartphone in South Africa producer Sandile Hlangani tells us about the new device this week, LG Electronics revealed its latest premium smartphone, the LG G7, featuring new artificial intelligence capabilities. Powered by the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 mobile platform, the LG G7 offered 4GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage. We have a new boombox feature on the handset that really acts as a subwoofer, giving you a premium sound experience. We have 32 quad deck technology on it, DTSX 3 3D sound. We also have the brightest display on a mobile phone in the industry at, at present that pushes it up to 1,000 NIT. And we know how frustrating it is when I move from indoors to outdoors. With this device, there is no difference moving from indoors to outdoors. It's an ultra-bright handset. And of course, the AI on the handset. The handset does all the work. All you need to do is be in the moment, take your picture. The handset does all the necessary settings. LG says its latest device offers consumers further artificial intelligence functionality with the inclusion of Google Lens features. The device will be offered to consumers as a box bundle. In other words, the handset with a number of accessories is coming free of charge to the consumer. And that bundle is worth retail value 3,397 Rand. What is it going to consist of? An LG Tone Series Bluetooth stereo headset valued at 2,000 Rand, a wireless desktop charger and an additional 64 gig micro SD card. The device has an 8 megapixel camera up front rendering clear and natural selfies with two 16 megapixel cameras at the back that deliver high resolution photos with more details as well as super wide angle configuration. LG has added features that make photography on the LG G7 even more enjoyable. Live photo mode records one second before and after the shutter is pressed for snippets of unexpected moments. Stickers uses face recognition to generate fun 2D and 3D overlays such as sunglasses and headbands that can be viewed directly on display. Members of the media who have played with it loved what they have experienced. It's beautiful, it's easy to hold, it may be slightly bigger than your previous one but it's really immaterial. Um, when I logged onto the phone just the steps were, were pretty easy. I love the phone, I'm a fashion person, I do fashion and beauty so it's very light, it's easy to use and I love the camera because I take pictures all the time and the price is also great. The retail price is 13999 after the break, I African Stephen Mohabe joins me to discuss cryptocurrency and following a recent story about a kidnapping of a child. Stay with us.
It is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. News Network at sabc.co.za on email. Now, the 12-year-old boy whose kidnappers wanted ransom in Bitcoin has been found. Katla Komarite had been abducted outside his home in Whitbank. The kidnappers had left a note asking for 1.5 million rand worth of Bitcoin. The child's parents had said they never dealt with Bitcoin previously and didn't know how the cryptocurrency works. The boy is reported to have been alone when he was found. Now, parents in that story said that they don't know how Bitcoin actually works. Different Mohabi from iAfrican is here to shed some light on what it is and how it actually is used. Hello and thank you very much for being a part of our network. Thank you for having me. Is, is that the first such case where um, kidnappers or criminals ask for money in Bitcoin? Uh, I think we've had cases, but mostly computer related where people would lock down your computer and all the information on it and use something called ransomware and they'd give you a Bitcoin address, wallet address, to deposit some Bitcoins in order to recover your information. Mm. Um, uh, but it's never been a situation like this where it's normal, ordinary um, crime and they say, well, we, want, we don't want cash. Not that we are aware of. I think this would be the first one reported publicly like this. Yeah. Um, how safe then um, is money that moves online or um, can criminals hide this money easily? That's why that one's Bitcoin. I think it, it depends on your level of sophistication. Uh, you need to take into account that Bitcoin is a digital currency. So by default, it's transparent and you can trace it. Added to that, Bitcoin has a public ledger of all transactions that take place between Bitcoin wallets and transferring of Bitcoin. So in terms of traceability, it, it's both a yes or an and no. Yes, in the sense that you have you can trace Bitcoin uh, wallets, even though you don't give your details in terms of when you register a Bitcoin wallet, you, anyone can register a Bitcoin wallet. But at some point, you find that people, especially in South Africa, would want to cash out into rands to use the money they've made through Bitcoins. And to do that, they'd need to use a Bitcoin exchange, something like Luna, which then requires some FICA documents. So then your, your Bitcoins get uh, linked to you. Mm. Um, are there laws in place in the country that deal with um, um, uh, cryptocurrencies and how these money move around? I think uh, there hasn't been any law per se, but there has guidelines. Uh, one of those is from the South African Revenue Services, where it said that it will treat uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies not really as currency, but as assets that can gain in terms of, uh, or gain or lose in terms of, 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 of uh, their value. So it will tax them accordingly. I think similar to the Reserve Bank, it, it can't treat it as currency because I think as per constitution or per other laws, the only currency we have and other is, is the rand and other currencies, international currencies. Mm. Um, uh, the parents of the little boy in Whitbank said they had never dealt with Bitcoin before. How popular uh, is cryptocurrency? Well, we've seen uptake. I think uh, over the past couple of years, over the past two years, we've seen people taking up and getting interested in Bitcoin simply because the price went up. And But given the volatility, it comes back down again. But going back to the question of how easy it is to, to hide and answering the second part of it, of yes, it is possible to hide your identity. If you're sophisticated enough, there are things called uh, Bitcoin mixers or services called Bitcoin mixers or tumblers. So this is typically what a money launderer would use. Or not necessarily. In some cases, people just want to be anonymous when they trade uh, Bitcoins. So just in a nutshell, in layman's terms, how they work is that you would need to ensure that the connection that you're using, the internet connection, one, cannot be traced back to yourself. Secondly, when you deposit your Bitcoins, you create sort of what they call, I think, a transition wallet. So from that connection that's anonymous or privatized, you would then create a transition wallet which cannot be linked via IP address to yourself. And then from there, you use what they call a Bitcoin tumbler or Bitcoin mixer, which literally, as the name says, mixes up your Bitcoins in layman's terms. I'm not getting technical here. Mixes up your Bitcoins and delays. And you can set a, something like a timer to say only withdraw them to a certain wallet over this period of time. Mm. So that's 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 one of the more sophisticated ways of trying to anonymize or make your Bitcoins not traceable. A Bitcoin keeps on getting a bad rap. A couple of years ago, um, a lot of people thought it, it would be over for the cryptocurrency, especially when it was used um, in um, on Silk Road, for example, um, the drugs marketplace. I think it's, it's unfairly getting a bad rap because it's not just a currency one. And it's unfortunate that it's been taken up and only the 
big stories that people get to hear about. The, and when I say people, I'm talking about just non-technical people get yeah. to hear about other price volatility and the Silk Roads and the ransom stories. There are good things being done with, with cryptocurrencies. I mean, there are solutions being developed around cryptocurrencies that have nothing to do with crime. Hmm. Um, and uh, for someone who is new to this, let's say the parents of this child um, had the child not been found, how would you advise that they, uh, they, they start? Because obviously they need to first start um, opening an account, a, a, a Bitcoin wallet, before they can then start transferring the money. I would say they definitely contact the, the authorities. I think that's the first thing before you even start communicating back with these. Obviously, it, it, it's, it's up to their discretion because there's a life at stake. But I would say contact whichever way you can, the authorities, because then they, from there, they can assist in trying to track the people, whether through digitally or investigating on the ground as well. And just going back to this specific case, uh, we because Bitcoin is traceable, if you look at the address that the criminals, the Bitcoin wallet address used, yes. I think there was a one Bitcoin uh, transaction made on the 22nd or the 23rd yes. after the note was made. And the, it, it looked like it was a multi-signature wallet where it was split between two people. So I think uh -huh. a couple of hours after that, they split the, the one Bitcoin between two different wallets. But then from there on, you don't, going back to the thing about a Tumblr and why I mentioned it, you don't get to exactly see how that money transferred mm. because they were definitely using a Tumblr or a mixer where you see so many transactions and so many wallet addresses that it becomes, even if you use some of the more sophisticated tools in information security, you end up going down a rabbit hole. So would you say this particular individuals were sophisticated? To a certain extent, because the things I'm mentioning are public information. You can literally Google it up yeah. and find the information. But it, it depends. But I don't know how the police found them. But yes, probably to a certain extent. All right, sure. Different more happy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Different more happy there is from iAfrica. Now, we caught up with SAFM's radio host, Sakina Kamwendo, and she told us about her favorite piece of technology. Hi, I'm Sakina Kamwendo. And my favorite piece of technology is iPhone and that's because everything I need to do I can basically do on this device uh, receive emails go on to social media networks check what's happening and also uh, basically just communicate with them if I need to whether it be verbally or written and that's what we need to do in this day just stay in age and of course stay abreast of developments news and the like all happening right here so my iPhone 7 <laughs> That's my favorite piece of technology. It is a CBC network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you very much for being a part of our network. Now, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg has appeared in front of the European Union, and Israel's military tries its hand in autonomous vehicles technology. These are some of the stories that may take headlines in the last week. <laughs> Facebook chief executive Mark Zuckerberg told the EU on Tuesday that regulation was important and inevitable. I think the question is what is the right regulation? Um, I think the, the internet is becoming increasingly important in people's lives. Some sort of regulation is important and inevitable, and the, the, the important thing is to get this right, right, and to make sure that we, we have regulatory frameworks um, that help protect people, that are flexible so that they allow for innovation, um, that don't inadvertently prevent new technologies like AI from being able to develop. Facebook has been embroiled in a data scandal after it emerged that the personal data of 87 million users were improperly accessed by a political consultancy. Now heading over to Israel. Technology that has helped the country's military drive tanks, guide and intercept missiles, and keep its computer systems secure is being redeployed in the development of driverless cars. The basic premise of our technology is that it is based on vision-based sensors. So we work on understanding the scene without mapping on real time. So our technology is capable of going into unseen situations, unknown places, uh, and we're able to drive in those situations. 
On an empty highway built by Israel's government to test self-driving cars near Shfaim, north of Tel Aviv, a Samsung-backed startup called Imagery last month demonstrated its technology on a modified Kia Soul. The five-seater equipped with cameras, infrared and artificial intelligence kept a safe distance from another car. And off we go to China. Home robots seem to be something only seen in sci-fi movies. But visitors at the ongoing 21st China Beijing International High Tech Expo have been getting a close look at some technologically advanced droids that could someday be in their living rooms. The robot allows him to walk in an upright position like normal. All the joints are trained in the men's normal walking mode. The four-day expo which opened last Thursday has drawn more than 1,600 companies from 14 countries and regions to discuss the industrialization of high-tech products. Since the first expo was held in 1998, the event has seen 5,509 contracts or protocols signed with a total value of exceeding 996 billion yuan. Robots in healthcare as well are the magic of the world of the future. Now, in America, the Obamas have started a company that will produce content for Netflix. In Zimbabwe, Taiwan has been granted a video-on-demand broadcasting license. This week, we are asking you on Twitter if you think online video streaming will kill TV. Now, the majority of respondents, their numbers at 40%, say yes. 26% of you are saying no. In second place are people who are saying this will be the case overseas and not in Africa. That figure is at 30%. And 4% of people who believe this will happen in Africa, but not overseas. And that's all we have for you. Find us on SABC Network and all that's on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. News Network at SABC.co.za on email. We leave you with the visuals of a high-tech water taxi in France. From me and the rest of the network team, have a good one. Bye-bye.